Stahl the undefeated! Oh, that's not a very good nickname. What if you do get defeated? Stahl the not quite so undefeated anymore, but never mind. Welcome to About Time, a Doctor Who podcast. I'm Stephen, and I've been a Doctor Who fan since 2005. And I'm Ben, and I've never seen the show before. Now we're watching and discussing every episode of the revived series. And quite frankly, it's, it's about, about time. time. Of the first class podcast about time. You, that sounded like a Dalek when oh. you did that. But rest assured, I have a banging Sontaran impression that I'll be ringing out later. Do you? Yeah. Do you? Yes. Do you? Yes. Do you? Yes. Do you? Yes. Do you? Anyway. Hello. Hello, 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 hello to all the people, 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 people. Sounds like it's going to be one of those episodes today. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. How are you doing? I'm okay. Yeah? I've got a sniffly nose. Yeah, which means more editing for me to try and reduce that. Yeah. But never mind. We're here. We're queer. Oh my God. We say that every week. Get used to it. Don't say it every week. I say it quite often. Often is not every week. Okay. I don't think we've really got anything to report this week, have we? Not really. Stephen completed two Raider 1 and I was oh, on yeah. two Raider 2. <laughs> and he's still yelling less now. But he is still yelling when... Um, when things come out at me. When, thing, when the yeah. monsters... Well, people. It's money people this time. Yeah. But yeah, no. Um, we had pancakes this morning. Yeah, that was a nice surprise. I made some... You let me have a lion and you just called up, Stephen, breakfast. Yes. Actually, it was more like, Stephen, breakfast. But, <laughs> but the yeah. pancakes were a nice surprise. With blueberry. Yes. And chockey. That was nice. Yeah. But that's enough about our mundane life. Yeah. Mundane life, sorry, not mundane life, mundane. No. This podcast goes out on a Wednesday. Sorry, that was absolutely terrible. Pretend I never said that. Like most of your jokes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and what was the joke I made earlier? I've got two jokes about King Arthur's Knights of the Round Table. Yeah. Who measured the wood for the round table? And it was circumference. Yeah. Another one is, um, who is the most depressed Knight of the Round Table? Sir Trilline. Any um, boom, boom. people familiar with certain SSRI medications will get SSR. that. SSR. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. I'm on fluoxetine, not Sir Trilline, but anyway. This is not a, an antidepressant podcast, although perhaps listening to it may lift your spirits, so. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. Anywho, so we're here because this week we've watched episode four of series four. The Sontaran Stratagem. The return of the Spud people. Yeah. Now, I warned you in advance, didn't I? So you, you knew what to expect. Spud! Um, I asked you a question. What did you ask I me? I was like, are they actually potatoes? Are they made of carbohydrates? Yeah, no, they're not. They just have a resemblance to a baked potato. But has anyone seen the body? I don't know. I haven't. Is it like fleshy? Yeah, I think so. Is it pokey? I imagine it's quite tough because I think the reason they're so short is because on their planet, the gravity is extremely strong and it sort of made them very dense and packed in. You oh, know? How do you know that? I think it's in a classic episode. But yes, I will say up front that this two-parter is not one of my favourites. Oh, I'm quite enjoying it. Really? I've, yeah, I'm quite enjoying it, actually. For me personally, it's probably... It's one of the better, well-paced ones. Really? Yeah. Actually, I suppose the pacing's not bad. Because you've got a good reveal at the beginning. Yes. You don't have to slog through. That's like the, true. I mean, that you've got the... Oh, Martha's back. So you've got that banter. That's true. And by the time that's worn off, they're revealing the, the, the enemy. The Sontarans, yeah. So... I just find the writing a little bit clunky, I think. It is a little bit clunky it's in writing. Cause good old the, Helen Rayner. Good old Helen Rayner. Don't say too much, because I was going to say, Helen, do you want to come on our podcast? No, she's but, a turf. We don't want her on the podcast. Oh, we don't want you on our <laughs> podcast. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, babes. <laughs> Why yeah. is everyone attached to this show a turf? Not everyone attached to this show. Who else? Russell T Davies. Russell T Davies isn't a turf, as far as I'm aware. There was that man. If this episode ages really badly and in like six months' time we find out he is and you listen back to it, no. just be aware that I'm recording this in March 2024. No, I don't think he is. <laughs> no, because, I don't think he is. Because anyway, he's he's, uh, he's very forward thinking. With yeah. you know, even for a man of his age, he's how old is he? He's sixty. He's the same age as the show. Yeah, he's very sort of up to date with with stuff anywho um so you're quite enjoying it i am okay the carbohydrate people um 
Do you know carbohydrates are sugar? Are they? Did you not know that? No, I'm not really into. I'm not really aware of those kind of things. It's a complex sugar. Cool. You've got simple sugars and complex yeah. sugars. Ben gets this little glint in his eye when he tells me something that I don't know. <laughs> He's so pleased. Well, I had to ask you a fucking question because I couldn't remember this. I asked Stephen, what is that spinny thing that clicks at a meter? It's a trundle wheel. Yeah, and I, yeah. Did, I did not know. Yeah. Anywho. Good for measurement. Well, it depends what you're measuring, I suppose. A road? Yeah. So I was trying to be funny. No one needs a trundle wheel, Stephen. <laughs> Some people might. No. <laughs> Use a little, like a pizza, looks like a pizza wheel. Use the t- <laughs> <laughs> oh! Don't, don't want a pizza wheel anywhere near what you're oh, measuring. No, anyway. So, should we talk about Luke Rattigan? Who's that? He's the geek. Oh my fucking God. What a fucking wimp. <laughs> His acting ability is rotten. I have to say, he is he is he is a good actor. His name is Ryan Sampson. Um, I've seen him in a few things, and he is good. Name the next thing. Have I seen him in anything? Uh, have you ever seen Plebs, the Roman no, that looks sitcom? Crap. Oh, okay. Um, he yeah, he is a good actor. I just think this maybe his American accent is not the strongest, and I think that was taking a lot of his concentration to do that. Um. I just think, like, he's a bit... Also, he's gay, the oh. actor, which is Well, nice. that's fine. That doesn't have anything to <laughs> no, do with No, I know it doesn't. I'm just, I just like to point it out when there's a gay person. Okay. He's irritating. And he's cute. <sighs> Stephen, we'll get on to what you did. <laughs> we'll get on with it. We will come on to that. Um, but, you know, honestly, like, I just think he's a bit clunky and a bit wooden and a bit like... Yeah. He's a bit of a psychopath. Oh, he is, yeah. He is not meant to be a likeable character at all. Yeah. He's a prick. I think the Sontarans are going to kill him. Mm. You know all that bit about everyone bows down to him and he's, like, he's always right. And like the doctor picks him up on his grammar mm. um, and he, he takes that really badly. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, Atmos system is a tautology. You can't say that. The doctor was like, it's been a long time since anyone said no to you, isn't it? And then he was just like, I'm still right, though. I was like, please don't say I'm that bad. You can be. No, I'm not that bad. You can be. I can't, no, please don't say that. No, but no, Stephen, the amount of times that you twist things to make you right, <laughs> because you can't cope being wrong, you will twist it and twist it and twist it until you find an angle where you are right. I'm sorry, babe, but you, you can be that bad. Wow. Welcome to the Home Truths podcast. It is the Home Truth podcast. <laughs> Me, I just accept I'm wrong. Well, it happens quite a lot for you. So. <laughs> no, I know some fun facts. No, I know you do. I know you do. I know one plus one is two. Yeah. Stephen can't go with being wrong, wrong, wrong. We all have our flaws. Yeah. I just like to think I'm not as bad as Luke Ratigan. No, you're not as bad as him. You're not teaming up with an alien race to demolish the earth because you just don't like it because people treat you badly because you're different. That is what I get, cannot stand about his character is that like you want to condemn the whole entire world just because a few people in your life mm. have. Um, yeah. Well, you'll find out a bit more in the next episode about what he what he wants to do and so on. He wants to become king of his own world. Basically. <laughs> His character's an archetype, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's him. I do I have to say that I do find that annoying in life. Well, no, I historically I've always found it annoying when people repeat the word of the end of an acronym, like Atmos system. It's like pin number because the N in pin number stands for number. So when you're saying pin number, yeah. you're saying personal identification number number. So it it's a bit irritating. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm also, as I've got older, I've softened a lot in regard to that stuff. So I take after my mum because my mum always brought me up to be like, you know, this is correct. This is the way it should be. Because she's always had a very clear idea of that as well. But as I've got older, like I've listened to people like, for example, Susie Dent, because I realised that language does change over time. Sometimes it's by people, you know, it, it mutates. But that doesn't mean that we're wrong or you're wrong or anyone's right or wrong. It just means that it's evolving. Fluidity. Yes. Do you think um do you think the uh Sontaran spaceship are sponsored by McCain? Why? What? Oh 
Because <laughs> <laughs> of the chips. Yeah, so I don't know if they probably don't have those in other countries, do they? No, it's quite a British thing. Yeah. But McCain do chips and they do like microwavable spuds that you can put in the microwave. Hot, okay. hot potato? No. Jacket potato. Okay. Um, my mum always tells you to eat the jacket potato skin because that's got the most nutrients in it. Yeah, I don't like it. I like it if it's crisp. I don't like it. I wouldn't eat a Sontara and they look soggy. <laughs> they look like they're like dripping juice. And yeah, I'm like, no, but in all seriousness, actually, that is that is a good thing that um, in this era of Doctor Who, they did quite well, which is that it's very easy to make a prosthetic, blah, blah, blah. But then to make it look really alive and stuff, they make it kind of like they put slimy stuff on it. To make yeah, it no, feel... it looks like it's sweating. Yeah, it's which so is really good. It's so it's sweating. Yeah. Um, what did you think of the um, design of the Sontarans? Uh... They look like, like in one of my favourite book series, they're probably what I would imagine like an ogre to look like. Yeah. They are a bit troll trollish. Trolly, yeah. underground type of people. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like them a lot. Well, I think the, the big joke about them, and when they were the very first story that a Sontaran was in, it was only a single Sontaran um, that you saw. And I think a bit like this, you see them for a while with just their helmet on. And then at the, at, there's a cliffhanger where, the, where he takes it off. Yeah. I think that the joke is that he's got this domed helmet and you think, oh, it's just a helmet. And he takes it off and his head is exactly the same shape underneath. Yeah. And that to me is like, think about, if you think about it, because the gravity is so harsh. Yeah. They've not grown. They've probably grown into the suit. Oh, maybe. Rather, so it's like <laughs> it's molded their shape. Yeah, maybe. What is the stick? Oh, I don't really know. He's got a little um, zappy stick. Cattle prodder, I thought it's it was. It's a bit like a cattle prod, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And what about their their suit? Uh, I'm not. Don't, yeah, I'm not a fan of the suit. I, I don't like the like... fact that it's sort of baby blue. Baby blue. Well, it's blue. It's blue, and it looks a bit like camp. it's like mid ninety iridescent. Yeah. Blue. I think in the classic series they were always in black, and I would have preferred them in black. No, I wouldn't have. Okay. No, I would preferred a bit more. So, like, the general having a bit more... Dip- they're all the same. They're sort of but that's the cuttles. entire point of Sontarans. They, <clears throat> they're a clone species. They are en masse. They're all identical. That's but they're name. not. Well. Those two were not identical. I know, but that's because you've got two actors playing it. But they're very similar looking. And he was like, we wonder that about humans. Yeah. Um, can, I, um, can I whip out my general style impression? Now... I advise everyone to get their cards out and we'll rate him. Okay, I've got my cards. Okay, I need to think of a line that he says now. General Stahl of the 10th Sontaran Fleet. Is that a reference to my height? It's okay. What else did he say? i give you a seven. Uh, out of? Ten. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just love the way he speaks because he's so, like, stereotypical army major general type person. Yeah. Like a bit like the, you know, in the Jungle Book, the elephant kind oh, of hates yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, how did that go? Huh? Two, two, three, four. Keep it up. Two, three. Anywho, I think about a million years ago, before we went off on a tangent, I was going to say, but the ATMOS acronym mm. stands for Atmospheric Omission System. Yeah. And it just irritates me because when you think of emissions from a car... It's E. It's emission with an E. But omission means when you miss something out. So I guess what they're trying to go for is they're, they're missing out the contribution to the atmosphere. I don't know. It yeah. doesn't make sense to me. It irritates me. Um, what else can we talk about? You said that you felt like this episode feels like classic Doctor Who. At the beginning with like, so when I was one time when I was coming downstairs, mm. um, getting, I, was get, I was going out to town and um, you were watching an episode that was very much to do with the, this military man. Right. Um, and it felt like, and then you see all these parts of these people moving about. Mm. Was it Remembrance of the Daleks? I don't know. I can't Sylvester, remember. It might have been. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it, just felt, it just felt like that a clip I saw. Yeah, I get that. See, I think ugh, this episode is very purple. It's what? The Sontarans have lots of purple lighting yeah, on their ship, that. and I don't get it. And also it makes it, well, that plus other things make this feel like quite a childish episode. Like in- oh my God. 
the 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 sweep up to Rathagand, yeah, and going up further to the building that felt like an like an opening to a t like a it felt like an opening to like a CBBC like a show, CBCC mystery show. Yeah, yeah, I think especially in contrast to last week with the Planet of the Ood, which is quite a mature episode. Um, this one feels a lot more Sarah Jane esque to me. I think it comes down to the villain, like not the Sontarans, but the the boy. The boy, but also the Sontarans, like they, they are, you know. I think they were testing the waters, if you them. think about it. They're introducing a new could be staple alien. Mm. Um, I don't know if they come back or not. Mm. But if they're a staple, like they, they it's like they go light on the episode. A bit like um Dalek, I felt like it was a bit light. It was a very good episode. Yeah. But it was it wasn't like kill, 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 kill. It was this human it was this it was this human it was so it was, oh, the, he, they yeah. softened them with the human touch. I get that towards yeah, but uh, yeah. I was a bit confused when you started saying Dalek was not kill, 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 because there's a huge body count in that episode. It's very dramatic. Oh my god, yes, it goes around beeping people. Yeah. Okay, take it back then. Yeah, I forgot that. Episode. But yeah, the Sontarans, like in this ep- in this two parter, they treat them as a serious threat, which is quite hard to do with the Sontarans because they are quite comical, in my opinion. Um, and I I kind of think they work better when they're treated as a joke almost. But yeah. yeah. Um. So why Earth? That's the question. We might find out in the next episode. Why does every alien want Earth? Because it, we're making a TV show that is made on Earth. For people who live on Earth to watch, so... Oh. Um, oh, the gases. Yes. Wilfred dying. Wilfred, yeah. Poor Wilf. I hope he doesn't die. He probably well, will die because you had your hand like this. Do you think he will? Yeah, and Donna's not going to forgive the Doctor for not being able to save him. Mm, what about Sylvia? She ran inside. Did she? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is going to be like a little bit like bringing home Martha's truth. Stand yeah, too close to the doctor, you're gonna get sizzled. <laughs> she didn't say it quite as camply as that, but yes. So Martha's back. Oh God! Why? I thought you liked Martha. I do like Martha. I just feel like if you're gonna come back, just do another season, love. Well, it's not her choice, is it? It's the right. It's the you know they decided to bring her. No, back. It's, I think it's a mixture. Surely, well, Rose they, got two series. They invited her. Oh no, it wasn't her choice to only do one series. But her 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 arc with the Doctor in series three wrapped up after one series, and she it made sense for her to leave. Yeah. But then they invited her back for a guest spot in this series, and also Torchwood, as you saw. So she is engaged now to Tom Milligan. <sighs> To the man who thinks Doctor Who is below his acting calibre. <laughs> Tom Ellis, if you want me to talk to you about your acting career, you're not going to want to say here is, but I will tell you this right now. Yes, you did Lucifer. Well done. We're all very proud of you. But don't forget the people that may got you there. Hashtag Doctor Who. Hashtag Miranda. Hashtag some other TV shows that you did in the UK. Mm. Those all were a part of your career path and does not mean that you get to shit on them. Okay, maybe he was just unavailable doing something else. I don't think so, Stephen. I don't think so. And also, he's not really part of the story, is he? And he's not a very nice actor. I've heard not very nice things. Anyway, what did you think about Martha and Donna meeting and like... Hitting off like a house on fire. Yeah. I thought that was nice. Yeah, because previously we've had... Rose and Sarah Jane catfighting. Yeah. It was nice to have a different angle. And and obviously as well, Donna is older, more mature. She's not going to be insecure. And she's made it clear that she doesn't want that. Yeah. Like, that's not her, that's not her game plan. Yeah. Oh my God, I love that. Donna, by the way, since you didn't ask, I'll have a salute. And then he gave, gave her a salute. Yeah. And then she finds out people have not been sick. And then she, we're oh all, all like, we love Donny, 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 woo woo. We temp. love Donna. Super temp. Not one hangover, man flu, sneaky little shopping trip. <laughs> um, Donna, you haven't met me. <laughs> I go to work when I'm ill. Yes, because you have a toxic work ethic. <laughs> no, I don't. You do. I don't. Because you have to look after yourself. Because if you don't look after yourself, you won't be doing your job properly. Yes. And you can infect other people if you're physically, if you've got something contagious. Um, I also 
it's a bit, don't you think it's a bit confused, the fact that they've got this Atmos thing, which is to do with the emissions and the gases, mm. but it also is kind of linked to the sat-nav. It's like, they're two different things. Yeah, I don't, I think it's, I don't understand. Okay. They're, they're just going for the whole, like, we're using cars as weapons, and that the Atmos sort of takes over the entire car, including the sat-nav, but yeah. I think what they were trying to do was something that Doctor Who has done a lot of, which is take something every day and make it scary. Yeah, like they were trying. Tree. They were trying to do that with the sat nav, but I just think it's a bit naff. Dweeb. Can we come on to um, the best subject now? Stephen literally clapped and was smiling from ear to ear. The set, like literally. 10 seconds before this person came on to Yeah, screen. because the colonel was like, Jenkins? And I was like, oh, I know who's coming up. There's quite a lot of hot unit soldiers in Doctor Who. But Ross is probably... The Malfi the... one. The not Malfi one. Yeah. Ross is probably the most famous. <laughs> is he? Among the fandom. Oh, he's not a famous actor then. Uh, his name's Christian Cook. I don't know if he's super famous, but he's been in a few things. But he is... Oh, he's so gorgeous. Yeah, he's definitely hot of the week. No. What about Trepper, the Who's Polish that? man? Oh, he was quite attractive. Yeah, I thought you would find him there. Yeah. yeah, he was quite attractive. I'm here to work. I don't know. Think about that accent. Just it's a bit hot. How many hours a day do you work? Twenty four. <laughs> yeah. Anything. <laughs> I also I wrote this down, and then actually the doctor even called it out, which was that the Sontarans are all about war and glory and like honor, mm-hmm. um, and they're not supposed to be cowardly. They're supposed to be strong and face things yeah but and yet they use that cord lane signal to stop the bullets of the other of their guns yeah like which is very cowardly isn't yes. it so it, i was i was gonna write that down and be like that doesn't make sense but i the, will the doctor say, actually called it out that, but i will say this i think i does i do think like does this person who wrote this really understand the characters because i think they look a bit like okay do you know the x-men juggernaut no in X-Men, there's a character called Juggernaut, if you do not know, but most people do we do. And he is like, he, he has that dome helmet and mm-hmm. he is like, he is, his power is momentum. So once he picks up momentum, you can't stop him. Right. He will break through anything. Yeah. He is, he is that, he's quite strong. And he wears this massive dome helmet. They're a bit like that. And I thought, thought they were, they thought they would be more, when I heard of them, I just, I did, I did think like little round adipose things. Oh. But, um, <laughs> like little the size of an Adderley baby. Oh right, because I said potato. You thought they were the size of potatoes. I thought they were actually potatoes. <laughs> like they grew from the round and popped out. Hello, daddy. <laughs> um, I've been buried in the ground for five years. Yeah, and I thought they would be like brute force. They are. Well, not. Mm. I thought they wouldn't be hiding behind technology and a boy. Okay. Well, no, no, you know, it's unusual for them to be hiding behind someone. But they are they are brutish, but they're also strategic. It's all about military anything strategy. Get, anything, anything to get the win. Yeah. Um, are they your favourite aliens? And they're not afraid of death. To them, glory of battle is more important than death. Do they have a hive mind because they're all the same? I don't think so, no. I know they're not my favourite aliens, but... Are the Ood your favourite aliens? I don't know if I have a favourite. I do. I know it's a basic bitch answer, I but do. I love the Daleks. <laughs> That is a fucking basic big editor. My I love the Ood as well. Alien. I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give I'm gonna do see, I'm gonna do signs for Steven, see if he gets it. Well that's not very good for um audio medium, is it? Oh. So Ben just wiggled his <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could take a picture. Why? Because it's hilarious. So Ben let me describe it for you. Ben was wiggling his fingers under his chin and then he was cupping something. It looked like <laughs> It was a brain! Yeah, oh, I thought it was the translatable, but same same sort of thing, really, yeah. No, I'm not a translated dude. I'm an, You're I'm a free a, ood. I'm a f- free ood. Dobby is a free ood. So there's that another bit that I find clunky in terms of the writing. They tr- they really do their best with it, but that whole joke about Donna going home. Oh, and then he was like, you've been amazing. Yeah, it was like so drawn out. I feel like it might be the opposite, that the Doctor might be falling in love with Donna. And Donna's not? I don't think so. Okay, good. Not romantically, um, but they have a super good connection. Plony. Plony? Plony tonic. Platony. Platonic. 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 Yeah. Do you know what, though? I think I've seen online, and it's absolutely brilliant, Sontaran egg cups. So the egg, 
that pokes out is the head of the Sontaran and the, oh. the, it's the best the bottom it looks like their suit oh isn't that a clever idea yeah yeah I just found that whole joking bit about her going home really drawn out oh yeah it's a little bit drawn like and like it's just unrealistic because she would have interrupted him but like the amount of time he was taking or he would have realised sooner or something I don't know yeah I'm sorry people are dying yeah and yet they're like flapping about like saying I love you peas and carrots what I don't know. Oh my God, Ben. I don't know what goes through your head sometimes. But you know what? I'm so proud of you. What? Because you actually said, oh, is that is that Donna's tune? Because you noticed Donna's theme. I When, when they <coughs> broke from that, I was like, I thought I heard a little jaunty little tune. Yeah, you went, oh, it sounds quite cheeky. I was like, I'm so proud. And how does it go? The pride I had in you is just drained away. Go to Stephen's YouTube channel and you'll find the Doctor Who fan orchestra because they've done it. Yeah. Also, when Donna did go home and then she hopped out of the Jeep at the end of the road, like, I'll walk the rest of the way. Um, Yeah, I'll walk the rest of the way just so I have an excuse to have a dramatic flashback montage on my walk. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and like, I'm sorry, why do you live so near the... Ma- no, what a weird thing. Yeah. But let's talk about more importantly, the flashback montage. Yeah. Have you noticed everything's to do with babies and children? Yeah, you pointed that out, didn't you? Well, not all of it. The Ood thing wasn't about babies. Well, they were babies. Oh, I see they what you mean. They baby Ood. Innocent baby Ood. Yeah. yeah, okay. They were maturing. Once they matured, they had their brains locked off and a yeah. ball stuck on. So we had the adipose babies... Then we had... The child that she was trying to rescue. In Pompeii. And there's also her first, the runaway bride, um, with the spider babies. Yeah. And there's a lot of like There is a lot to do with children, yeah. There's a paternal, ma- maternal mm. um, string. Yeah. I'm thinking through her arc. Do you think Donald would make a good mother? Yes, 100%. I think she's very family. Yeah. I think she's very maternal. She's very... She'd she, be very protective. She's very protective. She's very... She's all, She's very much like a mother hen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like her a lot. She's, like, by far, shot up there to yeah. the top of the top, tip of the top, the mountain is top. So she's there's Rose top. at the bottom. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you don't like Rose. Doesn't does mean it? I don't like Rose. I just think, like, I understand... Rose was good, but Donna's better. And Martha's better. I don't like Rose. I what I didn't like. What I like in Donna is is that she's maturer. She's stronger. She's a woman of her own mind. She's they they all are really. But she's strong. She's determined. She's not afraid to boss the doctor around. She's not. I just think. I just hope that she finds herself. Mm. Maybe find herself a nice little alien husband <laughs> and have some alien babies. Oh my God, we're back to alien babies. Alien babies. And there's that random old woman walking past who goes, haven't seen you for days. Hey, random lady. So we got to catch up with Wolf and Sylvia again. Oh, what a bossy mother. She is. She is like, she's. Awful. I don't like my life, so I'm going to peck at your life. Yeah, she's a right bitch. I, like, I do like that line where she's like, oh, I'm trying to keep your granddad on that macrobiotic diet. Only he sneaks off and has pork pies at the petrol station. Don't deny it. I've seen the rappers in the car. Did you did you notice as well how they uh, explained away the fact that Wilf was not cast in The Runaway Bride? So he wasn't in The Runaway Bride. No. So they were like, oh, it's the man from the wedding when you were laid up with Spanish flu. Okay. Because you've got to explain. I did. I, I thought there was just like something, something to do with... I just thought like, well, oh, it was her wedding. Yeah, he would have been there. He would have been so there, blessed. yeah. Uh, she would have... Oh, yeah, because the man died. Lance. Her dad. Oh, uh, Jeffrey, yeah. Um, one thing I love about the prosthetics for particularly General Stahl is that um, his eyebrow, like his, what do you call it? Forehead. Brow. The brow, yeah, is so sort of fixed in this position of, hmm, makes him constantly look very sort of... Constipated. Yeah. <laughs> I just think it really adds to his character. He's so far constipated that his shit is coming out of his mouth. That wasn't quite what I had in mind, but... Yeah. Um, well, it's time to put it on our list. I'm going to put this one just below Fires of Pompeii. Okay. 22nd. I'm glad because I was I was worrying you were going to put it higher. And I was like, I think you can't. Well, you can argue what you like. 
But this is certainly, for me, the weakest episode of Series 4 so far. Yeah, that's because Doctor Who don't know how to do two-parters. But you said this was quite well-paced. It is well-paced, but it's still not the, it's still, it's still not the best. Better. So for me, it's also going to go the lowest of Series 4 so far. Oh, it's going to go quite low, actually. There's loads of episodes I like more than this. Oh my god, we're on two pages, guys. Yeah. I'm putting it just below the Shakespeare Code. And above Rise of the Cybermen, which puts it number 41 out of 47. So, it, yeah, it's really not one of my favourites. <laughs> so quite a contrast then between us for yeah. that one. Um, do you want to know what the next episode's called? It's not that exciting. It's called The Poison Sky. Oh, OK, cool. Bit boring. Do you know what it's time for now then? Patreon, 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 shout outs. Patreon, 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 shout outs. Oh, no, you know what we should have done? Patreon, ha! Patreon, ha! Patreon, ha! <laughs> no. I'm going to read out the list in my general style voice today. Okay. This is the part of the podcast where we talk about Patreon. If you'd like to support us, you'll be joining the ranks of... Louisa. Louisa. Philip. Philip. Jason. Jason. Joe. Joe. Tom. Tom. Louis. Louis. Michael. Michael. Ferner. Ferner. Heather. Heather. Benny. Benny. Caleb. Caleb. Monica. Monica. Amber. Amber. Jay. Jay. Kaylee. Kaylee. And Kieran. And Kieran. Thank you very much. Those are the wonderful people who support us on Patreon at the moment. We love you very much and we're very grateful. We are so grateful for your support. If you'd like to join them, you can do so by following the links in the show notes. You can also buy us a Kofi coffee. I still don't know how to say that. You can visit our Redbubble store where we've got some merch. Or you could just listen. Or you could just listen. Yeah. It's just nice to know that people care. We will see you all next week. And until then, stay cool, stay safe, stay stay fantastic. fantastic.